Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, I'm back. Are you surprised? Am I surprised? Are we surprised? Well, no matter your level of surprise, <laughs> I will start this episode in the tradition of Sobcast, which is the trigger warning of our people. And it goes as follows. Even though Sobcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we will be talking about some not so great mental health things like anxiety, depression, and peeing my pants as an adult. Because today we are talking about UTIs. I'm super excited. I love talking about UTIs. Um, UTI stands for urinary tract infection. I know, right? Comedy gold. (laughs) Um, Why do I love talking about UTIs? You're probably asking out loud to your friends and family. Because they are hard to talk about, but it's kind of hilarious. (laughs) Like, what happens when you get a UTI? They feel super personal. I feel like it's hard to talk about. It just is. Like, it's your pee-pee. Okay? All right? So, um, yeah. When I was getting ready for this episode, I was thinking about this time in high school when... Um, a guy friend that I had known for years and years admitted to me that he thought periods came out like poop and you pooped blood for a couple days a month, which meant also that you could control how much blood came out. (laughs) Also, I guess I should have put this in the trigger warning, but... (sighs) Today you might hear some things, some sounds that are not my voice because I'm trying something new and I am filming and recording at the top of the morning. I just had my morning coffee. One of the biggest and best, best, best compliments that I've gotten about Sobcast is that you feel like you're hanging out with me. So please pretend like I've invited you over for a cup of coffee um, I, I put a little Nespresso pod in there for you, or if you like tea, I, I made you some of that and I have honey if you want some and, uh, yeah, there's construction going on across the street and Mr. The cat is being so mouthy because he's like, why are you talking about UTIs and not how beautiful I am? He makes an excellent point. But uh, we're going with it. We're going with the flow, right? We're in this together. Because not to be like too forward or whatever, but I love you. (laughs) Anyway, so we're talking about UTIs. Because I put it in the same category as like periods and like, I don't know, some sex stuff. And just like bodily functions that somehow we don't talk about until it's a problem. And by then, it just sucks to talk about. Right? Yeah. Um, I think there's also a stigma about UTIs that uh, when you get them, it's because you've been like super unhygienic, which I hate so much because it's just like scientifically not true. Speaking of science, should we get into it? In case, in case you wanted to know way more about UTIs than you asked for. You didn't ask for this. Um, a UTI, a urinary tract infection. <clears throat> I'm reading this because science. Um, it is a, oh, a bacterial infection anywhere in your urinary tract. That doesn't help, does it? Um, Women are more likely to get them because biologically, 
I'm sorry, wait, actually, I should say, um, people who were biologically born with female parts are more likely to get them because they have shorter urinary tracts and also all their holes are closer together, which means the butthole is like way closer to the pee pee hole. And that's like science. Okay. (sighs) Welcome to my sex ed class. (laughs) UTIs cause burning when you pee, constant need to pee. It's your body basically trying to like flush out this bacteria. And I mean, our bodies are really smart and really dumb. So sometimes they can do a really good job of just getting rid of that bacteria. But there's also a risk of ignoring a UTI, which is that that infection can spread to your bladder and your kidneys which can make you die. It can make you throw up and die. It can make you throw up and then and pee blood maybe at the same time and and then potentially die, which I don't want for any of you. And uh, it sounds just awful. So I guess this is a case of me growing up with a doctor for a dad and a former nurse for a mom, but it stinks. But if you have a UTI... You got to get medicine. And even talking about that, (laughs) I'm like knocking on wood. I feel like I should be lighting sage and like cleansing this apartment because UTIs feel so random, right? They, They do. If you've had them or if you have a loved one who gets them kind of regularly or who has just even had one ever, they feel so random. They feel like... Like in biblical times when someone like used God's name in vain and they're just like a plague of locusts. Like it just feels so random, right? It descends upon you like in a really slow way at first and then all of a sudden it's awful. And and to get help, you have to tell people that your pee hurts. Oh, sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And... I know so many women in particular who have had a UTI and gone to work and done everything and lived their lives or performed or like gone on a trip. They just, it's another one of those things just like period cramps where we're like, you know, yeah, it really is bad. It is really bad, but uh you just got to keep going, honey. (laughs) I don't know. I guess because women can put up with so much, we just keep expecting them to put up with so much. Good God. (sighs) I want to share some of my own experiences with UTIs. Maybe to make it a little easier for you to talk about yours. Or for you to be more aware of people around you who might be getting them. Um, I I will walk you through how this goes for me. Okay? I'm nervous. I am. Oh my gosh. Can we all, wait, can we take a second before I start talking really in depth about this? (laughs) more in depth than I already am. Can we take a second to just say a little prayer for all of our urinary tracts that this does not bring upon the plague of UTIs talking about this. That's really how it feels. That's really how it feels. I hate them, but also they're hilarious, but also I hate them. So here's how this works for me. I'll wake up. I have to pee like normal. It's the morning. It's my morning pee. I go pee. And maybe I go back to bed or I start making coffee or something. And almost immediately I have to pee again. Right then I know I have a UTI. I've had so... Actually, you know what? I think uh, 
compared to some people, I haven't had that many, but I've had enough that I'm terrified of them. And so immediately I'm like, okay, I have to put a plan into action because I don't want this to get any worse. Um, the need to pee becomes overwhelming. It's all I can think about. It's so overwhelming that uh, I almost feel like a full body sense of embarrassment. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like that warm, almost feverish feeling of just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is not good. I, I'm going to embarrass myself. I like, I can only compare it to a feeling that I used to have when I'd be at a sleepover at a friend's house and everyone else woke up before me and I'd realized everyone had seen me sleeping. Anyone else? I don't know. It's just almost terror and my heart will beat really fast and I'll just be so focused on the fact that I have to pee. Even talking about this, I'm worried that I have to pee right now. (laughs) And then when I go pee, it hurts so bad. It's like, it's like my pee has turned into sandpaper. That's, and it's just like the most sensitive part of your body, or at least my body. I don't know. I don't know your life. And it's just, ow. And oh, just really hurts. And only a little tiny pee comes out. And then I drink a bunch of water and I'm just like, this can't be, I can't. I don't, and then I have to pee more. So it just becomes this horrible cycle. Um, I get UTIs a lot when I travel. And I have asked doctors and I've looked into it. And apparently this is really normal. And the reason is that you don't pee for a long time, which totally applies to me because I'll get on a plane and I'll be like, yeah, this is a six hour plane ride. I'm not getting up. Absolutely not. (laughs) Uh, Not healthy. I guess it's good to to pee, even if you're kind of making yourself so. Order that ginger ale, chug it down. And when you have to pee, get up and pee. So I don't know. I I try to learn my lesson. But because uh, most of my traveling the past few years has either been work-related or um, wedding-related. I can't tell you how many, like, wedding photos I look at where everyone looks stunning. We've all had our makeup done. I got my hair done, um, wearing a nice dress. And I just remember that I'm, like, clenching my legs together because I know I have to pee because I have a UTI. Ew. Um, I remember one time one of my best friends in the whole world was getting married at, in a barn, obviously, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Well, I mean, it was somewhere, obviously, but uh, it was a barn. And so it was a drive, quite a drive. And I realized that I had a UTI on the drive. So I actually used like a, an app, like a, like a doctor on demand app, which, you know, Pre-pandemic, I'm not sure a lot of people knew about that. I I was just trying it for the first time because I just was so positive that I had a UTI. And luckily, the doctor was really cool and called me in antibiotics to like a Walgreens, truly in a town that only had one street. It was just the main street and nothing else. So I stopped at the Walgreens and... uh, the woman who rang me up uh, <laughs> asked my boyfriend at the time to pay for the antibiotics and then applauded him when he did because of this, like, stigma that UTIs just come from sex and from sex that you haven't, like, cleaned up after. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to say dirty sex But yeah, it's dirty sex, just not in the way that it's not fun. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was just so interesting. And I think about that a lot. Like, that is a thing. Like, that would, that makes me nervous to bring them up. And I usually don't care. Like, I don't really get embarrassed about bodily stuff. 
So if someone is self-conscious about talking about, you know, their body and like how they're feeling, uh, having a complete stranger assume that you didn't like pee after sex or shower enough or like have crazy anal sex and then not I don't know like having people assume is 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 nerve-wracking I get it and I bring that up also because a different time that I had a UTI um I went to an urgent care and it was I had gone to work that day and it just became so unbearable that I walked to an urgent care I just like googled the nearest one and I waited in the waiting room for like an hour, I kind of expected that. And then when I did see the doctor, I think I just had to like pee in a cup and then, and they do like a little test. And then the doctor, and I'm sure he had the best intentions and that's part of, mm, that might be part of the problem. I don't know. Um, but came in, said, yes, you have a UTI. And I was like, okay, great. Can I go now? But he proceeded to give me a long talking to about cleaning up after sex and about how if I had anal sex and then vaginal sex, how I really needed to like make sure I clean whatever's going in and out of me between sessions and just he was obviously like mortified talking about it which is weird because he's a doctor so I I can't I'm, I'm sure he's seen way worse um and then like then he didn't really warn me and he touched my stomach I guess to check if my like kidneys were in pain or something it just was so it just was so uncomfortable. And later when I realized that you could just tell a doctor on an app that you have all the symptoms of a UTI and usually it ends up being something that you can get medicine for, I was like, wow, I'm never going to urgent care again for this because it's crazy. This is ridiculous. Um, And just, again, I don't think that doctor did anything wrong. Maybe, maybe the, the, touching my stomach without enough warning that was not the coolest but uh in terms of like explaining hygiene to me like I I get it I just that's just not and that's not even why I had a UTI it was again a situation of like (laughs) holding my pee in for too long at work probably I used to actually play this game. This is it's a way TMI. Sorry, not sorry. I used to play this game at work where I would drink a bunch of liquid and then I would see how long I could hold my pee. And it was just a way to keep my mind occupied. I don't know. Um, so I would like drink a bunch of coffee and water at like nine and then I'd be like, I'm not allowed to go to the bathroom until 11. Is that self-harm? I don't know. I don't do it anymore. But uh, I just was playing games with myself. Uh, I don't know. So what else happens? Oh, yeah. Okay. So even when you take the antibiotics, it's not like they work right away. Obviously, a medicine. I don't know if that's obvious or not, but I don't know. I'm thinking about Balto. And I guess that little girl took that medicine and then she just seemed better immediately. The penicillin. That's not how it works, at least for me when I have a UTI. So I have to take this stuff called Azo, A-Z-O. I don't even know. I don't even know how to pronounce it because that's how often we don't talk about it. But it's this little pill and you take it and it really helps. Like it really relieves the pain. It like makes you not have to pee as often. And it just like also gives me peace of mind because I know like it's not going to get out of control. The The cool thing about Azo is that it turns your pee like orange, sometimes like dark orange, like um, it, 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 it looks like orange jello before it solidifies, right? Or like orange Kool-Aid maybe. I don't know. I haven't had orange Kool-Aid 
maybe ever. But if I was going to compare it, it doesn't smell. You know what? It's just strange because you're like, there's something foreign in my body, which is the bacteria or whatever. My body is fighting it. And then this this pill gives you kind of evidence that like something is working. At least like some pill is on your side. <laughs> uh, now seems like a really good time to read an ad. What do you think? I'm I'm so nervous that I'm just going to get a UTI right now. OK. <clears throat> Are you struggling with your mental health and don't know where to start? The Dive Through app has launched interactive courses developed by mental health professionals so you feel like you have the tools to start working towards a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. How was that? That was kind of my my fake NPR voice. Good, 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 good. Good. <sighs> Another thing that happens during a UTI is that everyone's like, take cranberry pills, drink cranberry juice. Okay. First of all, cranberry juice tastes like absolute garbage. <laughs> It tastes like how sucking a lemon feels. And I don't, I mean, maybe cranberry pills work. I kind of feel like that's something you have to do way before you have a UTI. Maybe to like, I don't know, prevent them. But uh, at least for me, cranberry juice, it just makes my mouth unhappy. And it doesn't really help. It's the medicine that helps. Um, what, what has happened? I know you're asking yourself, what happens if you just don't take medicine? Can your body heal it by itself? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm not a doc. I am not a doctor. But, uh, here's something that happened to me when I ignored a UTI. Um, I was just sitting in my, my own apartment because I am an adult and I pay rent and I pay bills. I was sitting at my desk in my apartment and I thought I had my UTI under control. I was going pee a lot, but it had kind of slowed down. And then I really had an urge to pee, but I was like, I just need to finish this one thing and then I'll go to the bathroom to pee, you know, a little teaspoon out. And then I peed my pants. (laughs) I peed my pants, okay? Pay my bills, pay my rent, pee my pants. That's what happens. That's what happened to me, at least. So, learned a lesson. <clears throat> Got the antibiotics. It's just... the. <clears throat> it's not, like, so much the act of peeing my pants. It was the cleaning up after myself. That was really humiliating. <sighs> And I think I even threw away that underwear that I was wearing because I was like, I don't want to see this underwear and think about how I peed my pants at my desk in my room that I pay for. Also, like, what? If you pee your pants, you just put it in the washer and just wash it like normal? I think I just put it in the washer a few times. I don't know. This is why we should talk about UTIs. So, like, if you don't know what's happening with your body, you don't accidentally pee yourself. Right? Right? There's a lot of work that goes into preventing UTIs. And I've talked to several mm, cis straight men about this. Um, that they didn't even know what a UTI was until they had a long-term girlfriend who regularly got up to pee right after sex, which, yeah, is not, like, the sexiest thing to do. But if you're aware of UTIs, like, you you know you got to, I don't know, you know, that's, like, one way that maybe you can prevent them. (laughs) Um...
I guess there's a kind of intimacy in it, huh? Maybe I need to give it more credit. There's kind of a a teamwork aspect involved if you're having sex with someone that you're you neither of you want you to get a UTI, or at least if you're with someone who's being kind to you, neither of you want you to get a UTI. So everyone should be rooting for you to pee. It should be like a fun, cool part of sex. The peeing after sex. You heard, you heard it here first. Peeing after sex is a cool, fun part of sex. Okay? Like, if you just had someone's, like, dick in you, I think they can handle the fact that you have to pee after sex. Was that too crap? Oh, my gosh. Is my mom listening? Mom, please. I'm so sorry. But it's true. <laughs> it's true. And... I don't know. I don't want you to get, get, have anxiety about UTIs for sure. It's not, it can be something that you can get kind of obsessed with, or at least I have, like preventing, preventing, preventing. And then when you do get one, basically by accident, I've been really hard on myself in the past because I'm like, oh, you, this is so preventable. Like I could have done something. I could have got gotten up more times to pee. I could have like worn looser pants I don't know it's I think it's just a part of life and I think we should focus on the fact that maybe even a hundred years ago if you got a UTI you could just die from it we are doing great comparatively relatively we're doing great so don't get too nervous about it And for those of us who hate making doctor's appointments more than they hate going to the doctor, have someone else do it for you. Ask a friend, phone a friend, even a coworker you trust, ask them to call urgent care or a doctor for you or figure out the doctor app. It can be a teamwork situation. Especially if you bond with someone else who knows how shitty UTIs are. Ask them for help. It's okay. Because getting getting help is usually harder than the help itself. You know what I'm saying? You get the antibiotics. You just, you take it with a meal. You wait for it to work. That's way easier than the part where you have to like call a doctor's office and tell a stranger that you peed your pants. And you, you're pretty sure you have a UTI. And also, while we're at it, maybe today is the day you text a friend and say, hey, if you ever have UTI symptoms, let me know. Sister, I will make that doctor's appointment for you. I'll drive you if you need it. You can rely on me. (laughs) Seriously, it might actually, it might, it just will lift a little weight that you didn't know you were carrying. A little... UTI shaped weight that is constantly on your brain. I'll just lift that off. Just a little, one little less thing to worry about. For those who are extremely nervous about finding a doctor or making a doctor's appointment, I like, I so get it. I actually have a little recommendation. Oh my God, who is she? Um, I had the chance, it was right before, it was like March 2020, like it was right before 2020 really started, if you catch my drift. I got to try an at-home UTI test that worked. It's called Scanwell. I believe you can get it on Amazon now. And uh, it, you... Science, you pee on a little test strip, or maybe you pee in a cup and put the test strip in the cup. But anyway, you pee on this test strip and you download an app, and the app reads the test for you and tells you whether or not you 
possibly have a UTI and then the app connects you with someone who can get you medication which is amazing I think that's a really really great option um I wish that it was just free in every bathroom I wish I could just I wish I could have a big party and then I put them in everyone's goodie bags maybe that's still possible I don't know what do you think you want to come to my party I got free UTI tests. They're at home UTI tests. Party hard. We will be serving cranberry juice cocktail. (laughs) UTIs. I don't know. Did I cover everything? Did I? Did I make you feel a little more comfortable? I hope so. Let's check my mood ring. Oh, it's a weird color. Oh, it is. What is that? I guess it's kind of pink. Kind of green. Like a chartreuse. What does that mean? I think it means that I hope you're doing okay. And that I I hope you never get a UTI. And that if you do, I hope it goes away real fast. And I hope that when you have sexual partners, they're really supportive of you going pee after sex. And that it's a cool, fun event. (laughs) I'm just sitting here, like, nodding at myself. (laughs) I guess that wraps up everything I have to talk about. If you have any thoughts on UTIs, like, please let me know. Let's all support each other. Let's, like, end this stigma that they're, like, just for people who, like, don't wipe their butt well. (laughs) Come on. We've been wiping our butts since we were in, like, kindergarten. Like, we know how to do it. Come on. Give us some credit. (laughs) On that note, (laughs) thank you so much for listening. (laughs) And I will, I will see you next Tuesday. That is not a euphemism that I regret saying that. I will talk to you next Tuesday. Have a really great week. Um, I love you. And I love your urinary tract. I'm serious. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the Podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right, see you next week. Love you. Bye.